Last time I showed you this video and while it did a pretty good job of showing you what the Simric can do, it also did a pretty good job of hiding the noise that it makes when it's turned on. Uh, for you to understand, I would like to show you some clips without the music covering it up. That noise is annoying and I really want to fix it. So let's look at what causes that noise and how to solve it. As you can see, I have not been using the Simric so much, so it's good that I'm finally digging into the problems that it has. Let's disassemble the rig and see how the motors behave on my desk. In my original video, I used an Arduino Uno, same as this one here, to send a pulse width modulation or PWM signal to the motor drivers and then to the motor. By default, the Arduino sends this signal at around 490 Hz, so that's really audible and that's actually the noise that you will hear, that it's the coils that are vibrating in that frequency. And here I have a setup to show you that that actually is the case. So I have a phone that records audio and um, it will show you a peak at around that frequency. Also I have the oscilloscope here that can show you the actual PWM signal itself and its frequency. Uh, so yeah, let's see. And here. So this is the frequency that you can see. It's about half time on, half time off. So that's the duty cycle. And then the frequency is actually right around here, 490 Hertz. And also here you can see there's a very wide band at around just a bit less than 400, yeah, 492. And if I shut it off, you'll see that it stops instantly. Right now I have the same setup, but only the Arduino has been moved uh, to make place for an STM32. And an STM32 is actually a more professional microcontroller and allows me to do some more complex stuff that I want to do in the future. So that's why I wanted to use an STM32 anyway. Uh, but at the same time, it allows me to change the frequency of the PWM signal easier. Uh, and right now I have set it up to do 30 kilohertz. And yeah, let's have a listen. So now you can see it's running at the same speed. It's about half time on, half time off, which means half the speed. Uh, but it runs at 30 kilohertz and there is no noise apart from the actual sound of gears and the motor itself. But there's no beep anymore. So I'm really happy. And that means I can now continue and rewrite all of the code that was on the Arduino previously and write it for the STM, which will probably take some time. And yeah, then the sound issue should be solved. While I'm rewriting the software from the Arduino to the STM, I also wanted to change something on the servo motors themselves. At first, I used a potentiometer to determine the position of the axle of the motor. Uh, and I used this bracket here, and as you can see, the connecting axle snapped, but it actually mounted like this. Um, and it was kind of flimsy, so I, I wanted to get rid of it. Uh, and it also wasn't centered, so that's why it broke so much. Uh, but then I came across this video. So I will place the knob again on the board, and you can see clearly that if you turn, you start seeing a kind of incremental increase of these LEDs up to 360 degrees, and then it restarts uh, until you... This video shows a sensor that can determine the rotation of a magnetic field. And that allows me to put the sensor bracket closer and it doesn't even require any moving parts. So it should be impossible to break. So I created a new bracket for the sensor and I had my printer do all the hard work for me.
this is the bracket that I just printed. And as you can see, I already put the sensor on there. And on the back side, this bracket has a hole so that the sensor itself, the chip that you can see, uh, is actually close to the magnet on the servo motor. And I also added these holes to act as a kind of strain relief to tie the cable to. Um, actually on the servo motor itself, you have this output shaft, but it's also accessible from the back. So that's why that worked with the potentiometer. Uh, but now I have just attached a magnet to there. And as you can see, the new bracket fits perfectly on here. And yeah, that looks really nice. It's really shallow and a lot more sturdy than what I had before. Programming the STM turned out to be a little bit more difficult than I thought. And also, as you can see, I created a mess for myself using this breadboard setup. So I quickly moved to something that at least did not give me any connection issues. While writing software for the new sensor, I encountered so many issues ranging from hardware failure to just not looking well enough into the sensor's documentation. But now it's at a point where I can actually use it in my control system to control the servo motors. Also, another issue I encountered was that to get the rotation in degrees from the sensor, I had to write some code to do floating point calculations. And my original STM did not have hardware built in to do that efficiently, so I had to get another STM and move my project to that one. Luckily, the STM framework is set up in such a way that it was actually pretty easy to do that. But yeah, it took a while. Maybe it's also nice to explain a little bit about how the control loop of the servo motors work. Um, it's actually just a proportional closed loop. So whenever the software wants to move the motor to a target position, it has an error in degrees between its current position and where it needs to be. Then I multiply that number with a certain factor, and that's the proportional part, and map it to the PWM output. And this happens 250 times a second, and each time the software will try to correct for the error it's measuring. This way I can make the motors move to any position that I want and as fast as I want. Because I wrote the software on the STM to listen to the same commands that the Arduino was getting from my PC software, which extracts the data from the sim games, I did not have to change anything to do a first test in Assetto Corsa. And now, of course, mounting it onto the actual sim rig and trying it out for the first time. I will let you have a listen to hear that there is no beep anymore. There are some more issues that I want to solve. Also, there is new ideas that I would like to develop. And I'm not sure what to do next, but you know, maybe there will be another video in the future somewhere. <laughs>